Good evening. Remember, remember the 5th of November 2021. I've already done this video once before, but it got copyright striked on YouTube. And even though we're not monetized or anything like that, they still just completely blocked the video. So I think it probably got about two views, which is two more than usual. Um, but <laughs> they decided to take it down. I thought, well, let's just do it again. Um, maybe a few people have a little bit of interest. This is where I broadcast the live streams from. And it's a sort of makeshift studio kind of thing. A little room just to chill and do things. Uh, first things first, I have this normally over there. I usually have a retro computer to use. At the minute I'm faffing about with this apricot that was picked up at the car boot sale. They're worth a pretty penny, so do look out for them. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing with it, to be honest. I do like to keep something a little bit unique, but we'll, we shall see, not sure. So getting in the room now. All right, so that is quite cool. It is um, a Run DMC frame t-shirt when I met Run DMC at the Q Club Birmingham and it was July, the 30th of July 98. So they signed that, of course, Joe Master J is not with us anymore. So really, really happy that I've got that, one of my favorites. This is just a, a shelf of clutter, really. Got a couple of witches. I've got a puppet collection, actually. Um, elsewhere, I've got a few various kind of weird collections of stuff, but these two witches I like because it's slightly horror themed. And um, I thought I'd go with some monsters and stuff. And I've got the, the two truckies there, so they're really old, they're well over 20 years old, these ones now, and uh, been there a long time. Now, this is a Godzilla, I believe that's from 86. Um, I found him in Cornwall a number of years ago, but I actually had one as a kid. And then, you know, I've got a few M&Ms and a, a Ronald McDonald. He's quite rare, as far as I know. Uh, and then uh, coming down here, got a, a new sort of collection that I'm quite enjoying at the moment. I swapped uh, Master System and some games and stuff with Ian from the Polter guys. And I've started filling in some of the other gaps here. So we, we, he, ga he gave me a, you know, a real brilliant uh, start to this collection and I've added a few more and I'm on the hunt for a few more Hasbro's a few, maybe some WCW when they come out in fact I've got a few more in the garage I need to add to that so that's really cool and that's an original ring as well so yeah of course big up Ian from the Polter guys they did me a brilliant swap there <coughs> and a couple of Tommy Super Cup footballs I like two of everything to be honest with you <laughs> my favourite stuff I've always got two of it uh, generally speaking, different variants, but not always. Depends on what I can get my hands on. This is a wonderful game, and we do play it every now and again. Me and the missus. Another great, fantastic game, of course. I've got two of. Hero Quest. I do have another a board game collection. That's in the bedroom. Maybe I'll go through that one of the days. I did show a few of those off on the Retro Chef Swap Shop recently. So Hero Quest. It's just absolute classic. It's, you know, not so dense as Warhammer but it's a lovely introduction and kind of where I like to be where you're not having to spend too long in a game you can still get fully immersed in it but it's not going to take you all day like Warhammer can but you know I like Warhammer as well really cool also Blood Bowl and I am after a, a Space Crusade as well which is effectively Heroes Quest in Space um, and you can get expansion packs one of these does Actually, this one has two expansion packs in, which is effectively like Advanced Hero Quest. Uh, you can hear the fireworks going off. I'm sure the, the animals aren't going to like that. This is a uh, present from uh, the niece and nephew on the missus' side. And it's a Bruce Lee collector's exhibit poster. And that's pretty rare as well, to be honest with you. It was an exhibition that was in Seattle in 2003 and I think it's a cool picture so yeah I've got to love Bruce Lee before I had a die hard poster in so you know they can uh, I can swap them out and stuff but there's only so much space on the wall it is what it is now this is a mess of course in no no rhyme or reason to this I'm just dumping DVDs and blu-rays up here now I've um, 
started to collect Blu-rays and obviously most of them are from the sort of boutique brands like 88 Films, Arrow, that kind of thing. And they're all in the lounge at the moment, all the bulk of them are. But I am putting stuff up here as well because I'm getting quite a few. Okay, there's one Arrow here, which is uh, Vincent Price's Six Gothic Towers. But if you follow us on Instagram, you can see what I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of martial arts stuff, especially Jackie Chan. I'm going for a full set of them when they come out. Um, but I'm only buying, this is pretty important, I'm only buying really classic stuff where I intend to watch it eventually and I want to keep it for reference. So I'm not just going for any old stuff. But that, this isn't a very good reflection of that to be honest with you. But it's just here because I've got, I've got a crap sort of eye for design to be honest with you. And maybe I'll get the misses in here. I need to get some proper shelving for the Blu-rays because I like the Arrow stuff in here maybe. And then... Look at that, I mean, you can see how badly done this is. There's some of my manga videos. So I got a job lot about a year ago now, and I just sort of dumped them there. It's really poor, you know. <laughs> it's laughable, really, but what can you do? Um, as I say, eventually I'd like to get them all on a wall somewhere and just have them looking good, you know. Um, because I don't want, it doesn't have to have, I don't have to sort of have every single thing. I just want... Decent stuff in the collection, but again, the room is a premium to be honest with you. I've uh, got the uh, Funai, it's all right, it's a six head, and uh, um, you can obviously record onto DVD, so that's why I got that for easy use. Not that I've recorded any videos yet, but I do intend to. Up here, this is this is cool. This is an Elise's SR16, they came out in 1990, and they've been making them ever since. That's a slightly newer model. I got it a few years ago. They're not expensive, but you get a really dry sort of drum sound from it. So it, very good for rock music and synthwave and, and funk and soul, which is really good. There's a lot of music sort of equipment in here, to be honest with you. That's, but most of what I do, <clears throat> to be honest. Then on here, yeah, no three times three eyes this time. Just got a bit of the SNES Mini. I think they're really good. The mini consoles. I do play them quite regularly. I like the fact that I can save. I did once have a CRT in here. That's now in the garage. That was kindly given to me by Fob. Um, but I'm again once. But you know we are looking at moving eventually. And when I do, you know I'll be able to have a hopefully a bit of a bigger room. Be able to put more stuff in there. Quite frankly. But as I say, I do have the garage, which is. You know, I can go in there, it's dry and it's all electricityed up and everything. It's not quite the same, it's not as, not as warm as indoors now, <laughs> especially given the weather. So yeah, a couple of minutes. And then I started to collect these here, which are Ian Livingston and uh, Steve Jackson, Games Workshop books. Um, well, just, well they, they opened up the Games Workshop, God knows how many years ago. That's what they're responsible for. But these fighting fantasy books were massive when I was a kid. So I really love him having a, getting these, you know, as and when they sort of crop up. And I, there's all sorts of little collections I like and enjoy and think, yeah, OK, I'll start one of them. I don't have to go mad. Just the ones I remember, that kind of thing. Uh, so here, this is a nice synthesizer. This is a called Prophecy. Got it maybe about a year ago. It's... Really awkward to program, quite honestly. It's got some killer sounds on it, though. But to be honest, it's yeah, slightly, slightly awkward to program for. But I have used it on a few compositions, so that's just there. Uh, beneath here, we've got so more. All right, so I'll tell you what that is then. They're the wrestling DVDs that I got off Russ. So Russ very kindly gifted me all these wrestling DVDs. Perhaps there's a few there from Paul as well, but I've got another cubby hole. So Paul, they're both sent boxes for me and they've been brilliant. Really enjoyed that and filled all the gaps in my memory on um, on the wrestling, which I'm very much enjoying as well, if you follow us on Instagram. Here we've got some more DVDs. Uh, generally speaking, you know, they're sort of music cartoon british just classic movies really look there's dead man's shoes that we did 
the killer on back three. And then, um, you know, the, the French uh, connection deep videos there. And then, of course, I've got some games. So I've got quite a few. So that goes quite far back there. Quite a few 3DS games. And um, a few uh, rave cassette tape packs. So I've got, I collect them as well. I haven't got a huge collection, but I've got a few. Got quite a, num a few in there. So they're getting really quite expensive to collect for. So Dreamscape and Hell Skelter, some in vinyl as well. Also got sort of, you know, um, Quest. So that's really old school. And a few more here. So a few more bigger sort of packs, you know. So they're the sort of enormous ones. More, so yeah. Oh, there's, there's, there's tons of other stuff in the back here. But more classic stuff, really, as I say. Only going for decent stuff. And so, yeah, there's some more rave packs. Uh, Videos-wise, I do, I do buy them. I do get videos, VHS. But I'm not really a big sort of massive collector of it per se. It's, if, if it comes out on a on one of the boutique labels I'd sooner have it as as good as I could get it you know as opposed to being some sort of VHS guy yes and no you know I've got a few that I'd like to keep for nostalgia purposes and I do like the artwork and stuff but it's certainly not exclusive or anything like that as I'd rather get it as good as I could get it to be honest with you <laughs> although there are exceptions for example a lot of the time the dubbing on the old uh, manga videos isn't I just prefer it the way it used to be and they don't always transfer them onto the blu-rays so you haven't always got an option so that's why it's important to keep the original ones and I've got a few videos that have never and probably will never see the light of day you know can someone show me where you can get blood sucking freaks I'll be interested in that on blu-ray also Song of the South uh, so, a couple of amps here, they're okay. A Fender and a, uh, a, a what's this one now? Oh yeah, Line 6 for the bass guitar. That's pretty, that's pretty jammy, actually, that one. I've got a selection of guitars. So, um, Ibanez bass active. They're nothing, you know, mind-blowing. They do the job. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a bits of guitar. It's, I believe it's a, Me a Mexican strap body, um, but yeah, I found that many moons ago. Then I've got a Mustang in there, and in here I've got, you know, I don't pay massively expensive guitars or nothing. In there is the, um, it's a Squire, it's a Fender Squire, and it's a, it's kind of surf green, but it's really cool, and that's a, a Gitalele there. So yeah, they're just, you know, it's just for me recordings really, you know. All right, that's wires and crap. That looks rubbish, doesn't it? As I say, it's all a work in progress. <coughs> in here, <laughs> look at this. I use old videos because it's not quite tall enough, this table. You know, it's, all, it's massively a ramshackle affair, this is. I ain't going to lie. So <laughs> it's got hundreds and hundreds of videos in the garage. And, uh, yeah, I propped them up. For, so it works quite well. <laughs> In here, this is something quite unique, really. This is Norman Wisdom's hat. So Norman Wisdom did a Hobnobs advert, and this is the actual hat from it. So there's some bits and bobs in there, Norman Wisdom and photographs and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's, that's a nice little bit of, sort of like a memento, if you like, film, films. Um... Right, so in here we got just more DVDs really, but at the back is the full Giver set, which I will do a video on this once I get round to watching it. So I think it's there and in the back here. Um, they that was gifted to me by the retro chef Lee, so I'm really pleased with that. As was that actually. Freddie's dead with the glasses, so. I'll do a video on them when, I, when I've actually got around to watching some in here. Is my original 3DS, and it's in pink, can you believe it? Because my original 3DS, or XL, 
was bought off a car boot sale off a little kid. <laughs> still got it, still working. I do like the 3DS. It's one of them things that I, you know, I, I think it's quite fun to collect for because it's just not very expensive. And in here I've got various videos, that's all wrestling videos. It's a laptop and I've got some other la old, older laptops. It's a Newmark PTO once DJing sort of seven inch. It's been modded but it doesn't work very well. So I've got a new, a new fader there, a uh, Jesse Dean and the Jesse Dean um, tone arm and, and an Orophon cartridge but it just hasn't worked for me and it costs quite a lot of money so it's kind of I can only get it in mono it's sort of like 250 quid in the bog you know extremely fucking irritating to be honest with you so if you've got one of them and want to mod it don't do the tone arm it's just, it's just fucking bollocks and waste of fucking time <laughs> I'm a miserable cunt but it's true <laughs> alright over here I've, I've had this mixer here, it's a Stanton 501, SMX 501, for about 5 million years. Um, when did I get it? 2002, something like this. And I cleaned it, I found it in the, I didn't find it in the loft, but it was been up in the loft for ages. Along with my Technics 1210s, they're also up there, but I did drag these back down. One of them, it's a bit of a mismatch really, but a Denon S3000, uh, which, is a, which is a nice... CDJ to be honest it does the job for a bit of mixing and stuff and uh, this one's a CDJ 800 Pioneer it's okay for now to be honest with you just to practice I mean I haven't DJ for about a decade and I just I'm enjoying sort of getting back to mixing and stuff I'm on the hunt at the minute for a couple of Vestax because they've went out of business a few years ago and I want to have some Vestax in the arsenal because as I say my 1210s uh, it's you know it's a bit bit of a hefty price for the repair job on them and um, I keep getting carried away getting other stuff to be honest with you. This here is a Zoom sample track really sought after at the moment. It's uh, it's just a wicked little sampler. It's a bit like a, they call it the poor man's MPC 60, but in some ways it's better. Obviously it's not built as well, but it's just really cool, really cool. I'm happy to have. Uh, picked one of these up maybe a year or so ago uh, what else we got not, not much really there's a couple of maybe effect units and stuff that's the hat we use to pick out the wrestle talk round table broadcasts uh, there they are it is legit up here you know a little another tiny collection it's uh, thundercats and um another few bits here I did have a bigger collection and I got rid of it, but then I thought, I found these again, or the missus did, one or the other. I just started, I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep them this time. These little things just crop up. I do have a massive tape collection elsewhere, but these are the few that are in here, you know, nothing spectacular, just because I've got a tape player. Bit of old school hip hop, Maiden, Magnum. Bit of Al Jolson, the missus likes him, David Bowie, Metallica. So, yeah, some, some half decent stuff there. Michael Jackson, Dangerous. Classic, got my first ever demo there. The crazy lard ass youth from the late nineties. <clears throat> bit of bit of Sonic, Knuckles, John Cena, you know, <laughs> Moby Dick, some some CDs, you know, I've got some Asian stuff up here. And um, you know, country and western reggae, all sorts of things, Jigu, you know, testament, you know, whatever goes, and a, and a stereo here. So it's decent, does the job. You know, it's a pioneer. They were pretty, pretty hot back in the day. These were, but yeah, I could go for a bit of a fatter system. But even though we're detached here, I don't want to go too loud and piss off the neighbours. So it's it's perfectly good enough that this is. To be fair, I mean, serves its purpose. All right, over here. This is where I speak from. Um, the mic. It's a Rode NT two A. I've had this for. Whoa since 2004 I believe and it served me very well I've had all sorts of people rhyming into this singing into it you know some really really famous people as well but I've also got some other microphones but that believe it or not even though it's not the most expensive is one of my favorites I think it's just versatile I like the sound you get from it 
Uh, this is a Fostex multi tracker. I picked this up off a of Facebook Marketplace, got it for a really good price. They're going up in value, these things. Basically, it just serves as a mixer, but not only that, sometimes I do record and uh, play back on, on, through on sort of an, an analog sound, and it gives it this extra sort of tape quality. And uh, you know, like I've got got some stuff on here at the moment, which is just all all sorts of weird music and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, noise, really. So all all kinds of different sort of music that I have a go at and stuff. You know, jungle, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, there's a hell of a lot of music stuff in here, to be honest with you. A couple of monitors, they're all right. Behringer, they, they, they do the job. I've had them donkey's years as well. I've had rockets before, and I'm more than happy with the way these sound. So, you know, the, the rockets are up back up in the loft. Maybe I'll get them down when the, the Technics or the Vestacks come through. All right, so a few small boglins there. Again, another minuscule collection. And one Care Bear, I think his name is Lionheart. But again, look out for them there. I like anything that's got a tiny bit of value to it, like he has, even though his, his ear's gone. He's worth a few quid, and I just, I don't know, just quite like keeping them, the scarcity of things. But I don't need a massive collection. That cool light there's a fob again, and as are these pictures here. So other than that, I've got, believe it or not, I keep scales up here, just for, for easy use, really. Um, I'm not the greatest keyboard player in the world, I'm all right on bass, but I like to be able to just refer to some of the scales just so I know if I'm getting a little bit fruity. Uh, this is a DJX, it's a, it's a kind of part kids keyboard, part piss about, but it's got some really effective sort of and old school sounds that aren't particularly easy to sort of get anymore. So I always keep one in the arsenal, to be honest with you. I just like them, and they're, they're really good fun. Again, these are getting quite sought after. But if you sort of hunt around, you can get one. Especially in Europe, you, you'd be, you know, they're, they're really after them. So if you do find one and, and you, you want to make a few quid, you can on them, you know? Because I think they were, they were sold in abundance here in the 90s. But this is a really good condition one. Um, so I do have two of these, again, in the collection. But I've, I've get, probably flogged the other one eventually, to be honest with you. And here we have an Impact GX61. It's just a, you know, good, decent sized MIDI keyboard controller. Again, does the job. Nothing mind blowing. I, is the other DJX in here? It might well be. I don't know. Could Something's in here. There's another keyboard in here. No, it's not. Ah, it's another one. That's a, that's a cool bloody analog uh, synth. That is. It's a. It's only a Casio though, but it really sounds cool. All right. Well, anyway, <coughs> that was something slightly different, wasn't it? And uh, we'll be back next week with several live streams. Firstly, on Monday. Myself, Champion 2D Rob, Ian from the Potter Guys, will be discussing at length Mel Gibson's Apocalypto, which is a really interesting film. And also on Tuesday, Wrestle Talk Roundtable will be back in full swing and we'll be discussing WrestleMania 14. And on Thursday, 8.30. Myself and the Sega Zombie will be going to the fourth. <laughs> the fourth. <laughs> it's getting late now. My brain's just gone. You're not having it, mate. <laughs> the fourth in the series of revenge films. And we'll be discussing Harry Brown. So there you go. I wonder if they're still setting off these fireworks. Hmm.